Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. Pleasure to have Brother Josh Herring here this morning. Amen. Who's ready for a word from the Lord? Who's ready to hear from God? Who's ready to obey the man of God? Let's stand to our feet. Brother Herring, come preach to us the word of the Lord. And praise the Lord, everybody. So good to be back with you. It's been a long time, and God has been doing great things, and what a wonderful day we're having today. Give honor to Pastor Hires, and if you love your pastor, would you get loud and clap your hands? And... Amen. That's... Some places I've gone, they've booed when I said that, so you're... I'm glad you love Pastor Hires and Sister Hires. I love them like family. It's been a, too long since I've been here. And God has been doing great things in the last four years. We've seen over 10,000 people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. God is pouring out his spirit. And several people will receive the Holy Ghost today in this building also. One already did receive the Holy Ghost in the song service. God's doing great things. Amen. And, uh, and uh, my wife and my kids will be here tonight, and uh, we're excited that God is doing great things. If you have your Bibles, the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, verse 16 through 18, and verse 37 to 39. Apologize for the voice. This is my seventh time preaching this week, so it's been kind of trashed. Acts, chapter 2, 1 through 4, and then 16 through 18, 37 to 39. Good to see so many familiar faces. God's going to pour out his spirit today in this place. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled. Somebody say they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 16, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. 37 to 39, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all, everyone say all, that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you're getting the Holy Ghost today. And turn to your other neighbor and tell them you need the Holy Ghost today. Someone's like, I already have it. And their spouse is like, you didn't have it on the way. It's going to be over this morning. God's going to fill people with the Holy Ghost. It's going to be a wonderful morning. Let's, let's bind together right now in faith. Lord Jesus, I worship you for what you're about to do. I bind every enemy from hindering anybody from a breakthrough, from receiving your spirit. I thank you in advance for the outpouring of your spirit. I worship you, and I glorify you, and I magnify you. Loose the people, anoint them, and anoint me. Do mighty things today, I pray, oh God. Blessed be thy matchless holy name. Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? He's worthy to be praised. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. In May of 1994, 
a man walked into the United Nations in New York City with a proposal that uh, for a one world government. 24 years ago, this man walked in with the idea and he proposed it to the United Nations that they should form a one world government, one world economic system. Uh, that, that, that proposal was accepted. And 24 years later, all nations in the world, except for three nations, have, have agreed to this one world economy that will eventually come into fruition where everyone has to take a mark of the beast to pu purchase anything. There are three nations that are withstanding this right now, and the three nations are North Korea and Iran and Cuba. You will find those three nations on the news more often than any other country because those three nations, what's really going on behind the scene from the man that worked at the United Nations, Art Wilson, who pastors there, has a church in the United Nations, told us this just last year, that these three nations are defying the one world government. Once they buckle and once they bow, a one world government will be released and the last days truly are upon us. You can bury your head in the sand, say, I don't want to hear that preacher all you want to. It's going on in the world today. What am I trying to tell you? Jesus Christ is about to come back very, very soon. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he's the Lord. You might be a Muslim now, but your knee will bow and your tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. You might be an atheist now, but your knee will bow and your tongue will confess he is the Lord. You might be a Satanist now, your knee will bow, your tongue will confess. Somebody clap your hands and praise him. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Hallelujah. The Bible said in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. It also talks about in the last days there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nation would rise up against nation. Then the Greek, that is ethnos versus ethnos. Ethnicity against ethnicity. There would be racism in the last days. The Bible said in the last days kingdom would rise up against kingdom. That's country against country. There would be wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, and every single thing that I just mentioned is happening at a record pace right now. Why? Because we are in the last days and Jesus is about to come back. You need the Holy Ghost more than anything in this world. You need his spirit living inside of you. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Just last year, in one of our services, I've got the pictures on my phone. They sent them to me of a service on the border of India and Pakistan, or uh, India and Afghanistan. They were in a service, and, and the three members of the Taliban walked into this service, two soldiers and the teenage son of a soldier. They came in to intimidate the people that were worshiping God. But you see, we have something more powerful than any terrorist spirit has. We've got the power of the Holy Ghost living inside of us. When those three men came in, the power of God hit them. They raised their hands and God filled all three of them with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But it gets better. They went back to the caves and at last report hundreds of the Taliban have received the Holy Ghost and been baptized. Oh, some of you don't believe it. Wake up. It's happening in Jesus' name. That's what's going on. God is saying, I'm about to come back. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, David said, and shout to God with a voice of triumph. The Lord is returning. The Lord is returning. Hallelujah! He's about to come back, and you need his spirit inside of you. John, Jesus said in John 3, if you're not born of the water and the spirit, capital S, you're not entering the kingdom, period. You can know about the kingdom. You can go to the right church, preach on TV, have everyone follow you, think you're the greatest Christian in the world. But if his spirit is not inside of you, you're not on your way to heaven. Romans 8 verse 9 said, if you have not the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. If you don't have the spirit of God living inside you, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost living inside of you. If you do not have that spirit dwelling in you, no matter how much you fake everybody out at church, you are not going to heaven. That was quite quiet. I don't know how you could call yourself a Christian, a Christ follower, and not want Christ living in you. 
The Holy Ghost is for everyone. It's for everyone. I don't care what crime. One time I was preaching in the Midwest, and I said, I don't care if you're an axe murderer. God wants to give you the Holy Ghost. What I did not know was on the back row was a man that the week before had was released from prison after 53 years of serving time for killing someone with an axe. And I'm running my mouth like, I don't care if you're an axe murderer. He's like, <laughs> guess I'm talking to you, homie. You need the Holy Ghost. We, it doesn't matter what background you have. I don't care what sins you've committed. The Holy Ghost is for everyone. It's for young. It's for old. It doesn't matter where you've been, how bad you've been. The Lord wants to give you his spirit. I've seen the young get it. I've seen the elderly get it. I've, it doesn't matter if you are. I, I was in a service in Modesto, California two months ago, and a Satanist showed up. And she walked right to the front, right in Sunday night service, a, a known Satanic worshiper in the city. And she walked up with all her crazy stuff. But by the time she got near the pulpit, when she tried to start doing crazy stuff, the Lord said, raise your hands. God has something more powerful than Satan. She reluctantly obeyed. But by the time it was over, God had filled her with the Holy Ghost. She was baptized in the name of Jesus. She came in worshiping the devil, but she left worshiping the Savior of the world because he has more power than anything you've ever imagined. Hallelujah. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, nothing is as important as receiving it today. Not, not, not what you're cooking for dinner, not the interview you've got this week for a job. Nothing is as important as you receiving the Spirit of God inside of you. Nothing else matters. You must receive His Spirit. Well, how do I get the Holy Ghost? I'm glad you asked. Jo uh, Acts chapter 2, verse number 4. We read it a few minutes ago. Let's read it again. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 4 said this, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts chapter 10, verse number 45 and verse number 46. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles, that's us, also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then verse 46 says, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Acts chapter 19 and verse number 5 and verse number 6. Six says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied in your Bible. When people received the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God inside of them, the evidence, the proof that they have the Spirit of God inside of them is that they will speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. If you say, well, I've received the Spirit, but I didn't speak in tongues, you do not have the Spirit. Ooh, I know someone didn't like that. You see, you have a human spirit. And if you're telling me that God filled you with his Holy Spirit and it didn't come out of your mouth, you're telling me that your human spirit is bigger than God's Holy Spirit and you can keep God on lockdown. Fills me and I keep him down inside. Liar. No offense, but you didn't get it. Because he said, Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit. So when you get the Spirit of God in you, it's too great to keep it down. It's got to come out of your mouth. The proof that you have it is you can't keep it inside. This water bottle is almost full. You can see if you, you've got very good eyes at all, you can see it's almost full. If the water was the spirit and I was the bottle, I, I would I'd be almost full of the water. But I'm not all the way full. The proof that I'd be full is if I kept pouring water into it and water would come out of the mouth of the bottle. That would say this bottle can handle no more water. Why? Because when it's being poured in, it's coming out of the mouth. It's full. When you are full of the Holy Ghost, there's an overflow. It comes out of you like it did the lady right here. A few minutes ago, when God filled her, it came out of her mouth. That's what happens when you receive the Holy Ghost. It comes out of your mouth. 
You know, God shows the tongue as the proof. I'm trying to be a good, mature preacher and not go into the crowd. <laughs> I'm doing real good so far. I uh, forget it. So, <laughs> that tongue of yours and mine, the Bible said, is a world of iniquity full of deadly poison, and no man can tame it. I don't care how holy you are, your tongue can say something you regret. Uh-huh. Well, I've never said anything I regret. <laughs> You're lying in church. You regret that? <laughs> Everybody has the ability to say, have you ever said something you regret? Oh, it's eight hands, 12, 15. Jesus, let the lying spirit leave. I'm trying to stay on my message. <laughs> it's funny how our tongue, no matter how close we get to God, can snap and say things. If I push the right buttons about the wrong subject, eventually you would say something. I was driving, I'll, I'll just tell on myself as you won't tell on you. I'll, I'll be truthful. I was driving to a Holy Ghost rally, and I'm flying down the interstate, and it's like six lanes, and it's, it's, I'm going 75, and I'm, I'm with traffic. Nothing, I'm not holding anybody up. I'm not a slow driver. I'm not a crazy driver. I'm driving with everybody else, and this lady drives by me, and she waves part of her hand at me. Not the outside of her hand. And uh, I was like, babe, did I do something wrong? She's like, no. I said, was I going? She's like, no. I don't was. Okay, I kept driving. And about 10 minutes later, someone else came by. And they waved part of their hand at me. I was like, what am I doing? She said, nothing. I was like, fine. Kill him, God. <laughs> and then I got to the service that night, and I said, God wants to give everyone the Holy Ghost. And the Lord said, everyone? And I said, almost everyone, the Holy Ghost. Because no matter how great you get with God, you're still flesh. And the most evil part of the human body is the tongue because it cannot be controlled. And God said, when I fill you with me, I'll take the one. Here's the proof you know I'm in you. Here's the proof you know something holy has taken up residence in something unholy. Here's the proof you know that something divine has taken residence in something made of clay. He said, when I fill you with my spirit, I'll take the one thing you cannot tame and you cannot control, and I will speak through it a heavenly language. You've never understood it. It doesn't make sense to you, but you know this is not me, but it feels so something I want in my life forever. It's the the peace and joy of the Holy Ghost coming inside of you. And it's for every single person in this building. You can't convince me God does not want to give you the Holy Ghost. You're out of your mind. If you're going to try to tell me God cannot give it to you today, he can give it to you. He wants to give it to you. He will fill you with his spirit if you will let him. He wants to be inside of you. I say it every time I preach it, but try any drug you want to try. There's still no high like the most high God of Israel. Drink anything you want to drink. It will not quench your thirst. You'll go back looking for more with a headache and regret. But when you drink of the living water, he said you will never thirst again. When he, when he fills you with his spirit, you will never thirst again. 
have any relationship outside this wall, have any kind of crazy relationship you want, it's not going to fulfill you the way the Holy Ghost will fulfill you. You'll have regret. You'll have pain. But when the Lord comes inside of you and fills you with his spirit, you'll know beyond the shadow of a doubt, I've never felt better than this moment right now my entire life. I am 35 years old. I have the most beautiful girl in the world as my wife. I have three gorgeous babies who I love and would die for or kill for in a second. But let me tell you, the greatest moment of my life is still and will always be April 7th, 1990 in Kenai, Alaska at seven years old when God filled me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's the greatest moment. It's the greatest moment of your life. When someone gets the Holy Ghost like it, it's the greatest moment of their life. Hell has just lost somebody, and heaven is gaining somebody. Hell is decreasing. Heaven is increasing. It's the greatest moment of your life. But God forbid if you die in a car wreck today or you take a nap and never wake up, you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. Let me tell you something. If Jesus said you must be born of the water and the spirit, and if the word said if I don't have the spirit, I'm none of his. And if Peter said repent everyone and be baptized in Jesus' name and you'll receive the Holy Ghost, then I need his spirit inside of me. I'm not playing a game with heaven or hell. I'm not planning. I've had too many people die on me that I told to get right with God. And they said no, and they died. Let me tell you something. Nothing is as important as God filling you with his spirit. Nothing. Nothing. I was in a service a few. Well, I was in a, I was in a service. It was a, we had just had service on Sunday. It was a Monday, I believe. And Monday or Tuesday, we were driving. It was our second. Our, we have a four-year-old. His name's Jude. Our three-year-old is Jet, and our baby girl's name's Jade. And well, Jet was just born. He was like six weeks old. And so we are going. We had taken some pictures of him, and so we were going back to this little studio to pick up the pictures of him. And as we were going to the studio. Uh, there was a man on the side of the road between Ocala and Bellevue in, the, in, the, in this, like it was like 104 degrees out in the middle of June. It was smoking hot, and he's on the ground on the side of the road, and I'm flying, and maybe, I'm, maybe that's why they wave farther hand at me, uh, and, I'm, and I'm driving, and as I'm driving, I just glance, and I see him on the ground, and I kept driving, and I got about a mile down the road, and Janae was like, um, are you going to go back? I was like, Yes, babe, I'm trying to find somewhere to turn around. She's like, we've passed 13 driveways. <laughs> babe, I'm trying to find somewhere big enough to turn around. <laughs> so t- t- turn around, head back. He's on the ground, and he has no idea I'm even there. He's no vehicle, just hands. And I look up, and he's bawling, crying, and he's sweating, and there's just drops of tears and sweat hitting the ground. He's shaking. I walk up to him. I said, hey, man, are you all right? And he's like, I just want to die. I just want to die right now. And I said, man, what, what, what's going on? What's your name? He said, my name's Tito. I just want to die. I said, Tito, I'm Josh. You're not going to die. What's going on? He said, I, I don't want to live anymore. I said, well, why don't you want to live anymore? He said, yesterday my two-year-old baby girl was killed in a car wreck. And he said, I went to the hospital. She didn't make it. And he said, I came back home after being in the hospital all day. He said, this doesn't even matter. He said, but my truck had been repossessed. When I got home, I called my boss and said, my baby was just killed. My truck has been repossessed. And uh, he said, well, if you're telling me you're not coming to work tomorrow, you're fired. And so he said, I got fired. I don't even care about the job. I don't even care about the car. He said, but my kid's gone. There's no reason for me to live. I just want to die. Please, please let me die, screaming on the ground. And I said, first of all, spirit of suicide, get off him now in the name of Jesus. And when I said that, he stood up. I said, Tito. It can't get any worse, but it's about to get a whole lot better. He said, what do you mean? I said, God has something for you. And I gave him my phone number. I said, listen, I'm going out of town to preach tomorrow. I want to I talk to you. I want to connect with you. He gave me his number. Okay, Josh, okay. I said, let me help you. No, let me give you a ride. No, 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 I'm fine. And I said, listen, I, I put my hands on him, and I prayed for him on the side of the road. And he, he dried his tears. I'm going to be all right. I said, okay. So I'm driving down the road. I'm driving away. And as I'm driving away, the Lord speaks to me and says, text him to read Acts 2.38. And I'm like, we're not supposed to text and drive, God. It's against the law. That can't be God. But my wife's like, what are you doing? Like, the Lord said to text him. I'm obeying God, not man. 
Read Acts 2.38, Tito. Do you have a Bible? Question mark. Send. He texted me right back. I've got a Bible app on my phone. I'll read it right now. I said, okay. 30 seconds later, he texted me again. When can you baptize me? I said, I'll baptize you tomorrow. I said, I'll call the pastor here in this town in Bellevue, and I'll, and I'll find out if we can get to his baptistry before, we, before I go to town. I'll pick you up. Give me your house address. I'll pick you up. I'll get you to that baptistry. We're going to baptize you in Jesus' name. God's going to feed you with the Spirit. You're going to be a new creature. He's like, all right, man, sure, I want it. I want it. I said, okay, awesome. I got done texting him. I said, uh, Lord, I need to talk to the enemy for a moment. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to say something to the enemy because I know if you give the devil 24 hours to stop somebody from coming to church, or from getting the Holy Ghost, or from coming to the altar from their pew. He'll, he'll, he's working on some of you right now in your pew. He works while I'm preaching. And so I said, let me tell you something, devil. This guy's going to get the Holy Ghost. No matter what you try to do to him, God has a plan for him, and we're going to wash his sins away, and God is going to fill him with his spirit. Later on that night, I told the enemy again. I said, I know you're going to try something, but it's not going to work. I bind you in Jesus' name. He's going to get the Holy The next morning, I woke up. I know you're going to try something. I bind you in Jesus' name. I was going to pick him up at 2 o'clock. At 1 o'clock, he calls me. He says, Josh. I said, yep. He said, um, can you come get me right now? I said, yeah. He said, why? He said, uh, a brawl just broke out at my house. The cops are coming. I think I'm going to get arrested. And I said, and so we're going to come flee the scene? He's like, yes. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> Janae's like, where are you going? I said, Tito's got a huge fight. The cops are coming to arrest him. I'm going to pick him up and flee the scene. So we can get him baptized and get the Holy Ghost because the devil's a liar. She's like, you could go to jail. I'm like, I don't care if I go to jail. That dude's getting the Holy Ghost, period. It's the last thing I do. <laughs> so I, I find the address. My wife's pleading the blood over me. I'm like, babe, it's fine. I, I drive over there, and I pull up in the little duplex parking lot, and he's nowhere to be found. There's no, there's no cars. I'm like, man, I'm at the wrong place. Then I look over in the woods, and here he comes bolting out of the woods. Blood all over his hands, dies in the car. Go, go, go. I'm like, this is actually going down. Okay. I got the, you were exaggerating. Okay, so we're taking off. I'm flying around the parking lot. He's like... I told you it can't get worse. I said, hold on a second. I need to call the pastor. We need the baptistry about an hour early. Why? Uh, let's just say we're in a hurry. <laughs> okay. He said, well, the guy I was going to send can't be there for a few minutes, so someone else is in there. They'll let you in. You know, you know where to go. I said, yeah, okay. He said, I'm sending a guy. He'll, he'll meet you there in a little bit. I said, okay. I said, all right. So we get there, and, and Tito's crying. I took him to the back behind the baptistry, and I said, the dressing room in there. I said, just get that robe on and change in there, and when, when you come out, we're going to baptize you in Jesus' name. All your sins are going to wash away, and God's going to fill you with his spirit. Okay, Josh, okay. I said, okay. So Tito goes back in the back room. When Tito goes in the back room, this big dude walks in. And this is the guy the pastor sent, and his name was Terrell. And Terrell walks in, and Tito walks out of the dressing room, and Tito goes, I know you. And Terrell goes, I know you too. And I'm like, oh, my Lord. I'm like, well, we're all going to pray together and repent of all of our sins. I was like, I know you from somewhere. And he was like, I know you too. I'm like, okay. All right. Well, we're going to grab hands. Lord, forgive us of all of our sins and failures and mistakes and regrets. And I'm praying, and they're, and they're kind of smiling. They don't even know it. They can't remember each other, but they, they, knew, they knew something. And so they, they stopped praying. And I said, okay, here's what's going to happen. I said, we're going to pray again. And I said, we're going to take you to that baptistry. We're going to put you in the water. And you're going to come up, and God's going to feel with the Holy Ghost. You're going to speak with tongues. And he said, okay. And we started praying again. And while we were praying in the dressing room, God fills him with the Holy Ghost. He starts speaking in tongues in the dressing room. We baptize him in Jesus' name. He comes out. He said, I've never felt so much peace. I haven't felt this good in my life. He speaks in tongues again. God fills him again. And he gets out of the baptistry and goes to Terrell and goes, I know where I know you from. And Terrell said, where? He said, did you used to drive a truck with a sign, read Acts 238 on the back of it? He said, yeah. He said, 
six years ago, you, you came to my neighbor's house, my, my, my neighbor next door, and taught him a Bible study for several weeks in a row, and you would back your truck up to my window, and every time I opened the window, all I would see was read Acts 238. He said, and then Josh picked me up yesterday and texted me, read Acts 238. What's going on around here? I said, what's going on around here is God has been waiting on you and has been looking for you. You can stand. <laughs> he went over to his phone. and I said, what are you doing, Tito? He said, I'm deleting some of these bad songs. I said, man, you got the real Holy Ghost. <laughs> and so it all ended. And he, was, he went his way. And Terrell, Terrell took him home. And, and I went to Hobby Lobby. And I got one of those crosses that you see on the side of the road where someone has tragically died in a vehicle accident. And I went to the spot on the road where I found him. And a little hill in the ditch right there. I wrote on that cross, Tito Sierra died June 5th, 2015. Born again, June 6th, 2015. And I nailed it on that side of the road. And people drive by there all the time and think somebody died. And they're right, but it's not a message to people. It's a message to hell that no matter how low you take somebody, no matter what you do to their family, no matter what they suffer, when it's time to come out, God will get them out every single time. He loves everyone in this building. He wants you to have his spirit inside of you. Oh, how, how do I get the whole, I don't know how to pray. What do I do? I can't give you the Holy Ghost. Pastor hires, can't give it to you, but I can tell you how to get the Holy Ghost. It's really simple. I'm going to give you five little steps. Number one, repent of your sins. In a moment before we pray for the Holy Ghost, we'll all repent of our sins. That's turning away from sin. Now, I'm sorry, but Lord, I'm turning away from what I'm doing wrong. Help me, God. That's repentance. So before we pray for the Holy Ghost in a few moments, I'll have Pastor come. He'll lead us in a prayer of repentance, and we'll all pray together because everybody has sinned. And if you're going to be an altar worker, or if you're going to be up here and you already have the Holy Ghost, you need to repent too so God will use you when you pray for someone to get the Holy Ghost. Repent. Number two, you have to desire the Holy Ghost to receive it. If you do not want it, and everybody around you wants it, God will ignore you and fill everybody else around you with the Holy Ghost. Someone say desire. Number three, you have to have your mind focused on God. Not on the preacher, not on who's praying with you, not on where you're going to eat today, what bills are due tomorrow. You've got to have your mind. This is your moment. One of the greatest ways to get your mind on God when you're praying is to lift your hands and lift your head and lift your head toward him and think about how great he is, not how bad you are, how great he is, not how great you are, how great he is. He is the one that's going to fill you with his spirit. Number four, you have to have faith that God's going to fill you today. What is faith? faith? Faith. I'm going up there. I'm getting the Holy Ghost. I'm not leaving without it. Period. That's faith. That's real faith. Not, well, I hope I get it and let's just see. No, that's hope. Faith is, I'm going, I'll be shocked if God does not fill me. He wants me to have his spirit. It's a promise to me. And number five, and you got to get this one. This is huge. For you to get the Holy Ghost, you repent, you got to desire it, your mind's going to be on God, you have to have faith, and the biggest one of all, when it's time to pray for the Holy Ghost, you've got to worship God with your own mouth. It makes no sense for me to come down and pastor and us be praying with all of our heart for you to get the Holy Ghost and you refuse to speak. I'm not making fun of you pray like that, but if you're refusing to speak, you're not going to speak in tongues. 
and worship is what you do to get God's attention. And the greatest way to get God's attention when you're praying for a spirit is to start telling him hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That means I give everything to you, Lord. It's the highest praise I can give you. It's the best praise I can give you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the word said he dwells in the praises of Israel. So when you start to praise him with the best praise you have, he starts to dwell among the praise. And he begins to pour out his spirit. And guess what? Some of you, after, after we've repented, I'll pray a prayer of faith, which is me taking all my faith, connecting with your faith, and I'll tell you to shout hallelujah. And that's your sign to start worshiping for the Holy Ghost. And some of you will start to say hallelujah. And that'll be the last thing you say in English is God takes over and starts to speak out of you. And it won't make any sense, but let it flow. It's a river, and God will fill you with his spirit. Some may take a few moments, but keep worshiping him with your mouth. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Whatever comes to you. And guess what? When those words start to come, and they're not making any sense at all hallelujah has served its purpose i love you jesus has served its purpose but let those words out that you're feeling inside of you and god's gonna fill you with his spirit amen would you help me out right now would you turn to all the four neighbors around you and ask them have you received the holy ghost yet would you do that right now would you just turn to your neighbors have you received the holy ghost yet and would you answer the question yes or no be honest if they said no, tell them today's the day. If they said yes and you think they're lying, we all know there's some liars in here already. <laughs> I'm kidding. Today's the day. People lie in church, y'all, more than any other place in the world. I had a guy one time, I witnessed to him for six weeks on baptism. He told me he was never baptized. He finally came to church. He sat by my wife. I said, ask your neighbor if you've been baptized. I watched him go to my wife and say, yes, I have. And so, if you know me, I'm half crazy. I said, Kevin, you are lying, and you're going to hell. <laughs> Kevin got baptized that day. <laughs> hey, I don't play. This is the greatest moment of your life. This is the creator of the universe coming inside of you. I think it's a big deal. It's, it's more than a big deal. It's the greatest moment you'll ever experience when God fills you with his spirit. So here's what's going to happen. Okay? So we're all on the same page. In a moment, I'm going to have all of us to come to the front. In a moment. And when we all come to the front, pastor's going to take it, and we're all going to repent of our sins. Okay? And, and you repent for you, and you obey what he says. And be sincere. And after he's done, I'll take it. I'll pray a short prayer of faith. And I'll tell you to receive the Holy Ghost, and you'll start shouting hallelujah. If you've got the Holy Ghost, your job is to pray for people. And lay your hands on them. And I'll communicate what I want you to do when they start to get the Holy Ghost so, so I can know when, you, when, when you're praying with them that they got the Holy Ghost. Why do I need to know? Because I've got the mic. And basically, I, if, if, we want, if we want everyone to get it, we need to know when someone gets it. I will pour out in the last days of my spirit. If I pour water right there, I poured it, but it landed in several spots. Why? When something pours, it splashes. So when someone gets the Holy Ghost over in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. When someone gets it over here and you say, this one got it, and I know that one got it, I can say, one just got the Holy Ghost right there. Well, guess what? It'll splash over there. It'll splash over there. It'll splash. God will pour out his spirit today. Okay? And I'll tell you what to do when we get it close. So here's what we're going to do right now. Would you grab that neighbor by the hand? It's not a very far walk up here if you're physically able. Just all, everyone come to the, to the front as close as you can. Bring everybody in your pew. If you stay in your pew, I guess that's my sign to pray for you myself. So <laughs> I'll do it too. Come here. Come on up here. This is about to be a great moment. Get as close as you can. The reason why we repent is because it's essential. It's, it's not a, it's, well, we just do this and get it out of the way. No, it's essential. You're about to get a miracle straight. The greatest miracle you'll ever receive is the Holy Ghost. It's greater than healing. You can be healed and go straight to hell. But the Holy Ghost, baptism in his name, that's an access to heavenly world. That's somewhere you want to go forever. Come forward. Pastor's going to come. Lead us in a prayer of repentance and we'll follow his instructions. Let's all close our eyes. Help me pray. God, right now, we come to you, Lord, at this portion of the service. We acknowledge and admit Lord, that we're far from perfect. 
We know that we have issues. We know that we have weaknesses. We know that so many times in our life we have failed to measure up. Lord, we're readily admitting that there are times in our lives, Lord, that we confess. Lord, that when we could have gone the right way, we went the wrong way. When we should have done the right thing, we did the wrong thing. Lord, you're well aware, Lord, of our shame and our disgrace, the shadows and the memories, the hurt and the pain and the scars. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, for every single one of us, we repent of all the sins of our past. Lord, right now, in the name of the Lord, we're asking that you hear our cry. Forgive us, Lord, of every deed, every act, every word, every thought that's grieved you, that's hindered the work of the Spirit in our lives, that's ignored your promptings and overtures. Lord, we pray that you would forgive us of all of our sin. Forgive us of all of our wrongdoing. Cleanse us, God, of all of our presumption and pride. Make us whole. Make us clean. Make us right. Make us pure in your sight, O God. Take us, O Lord, wherever we're at. Make us into who we need to be. We surrender completely and totally unto you, O oh Lord, our past and our present and our future. We love and honor you and we thank you, Lord, for hearing our cry. We thank you, O oh Lord, for hearing our sincere prayer. you clap your hands and thank the Lord for forgiving you. Thank the Lord for forgiving you of your sins. Here's what's about to take place. I have to pray the prayer of faith and and then we're gonna when I'm done I'll have you shout hallelujah and that's your cue to start worshiping him. Give him hallelujahs best praise you can give them and, and let it flow out of your mouth. Now, those that have the Holy Ghost, people around you need it. There's several up here that need the Holy Ghost. I want you to get this. When someone gets the Holy Ghost, when you start to pray with them and you hear them start to speak in tongues, you see it. Do me a favor, okay? Throw your thumb in the air. That's your way of telling me someone just got the Holy Ghost. I can't tell from up here if someone over there got the Holy Ghost, but you can tell. And you can let me know. The Bible says they heard them speak with tongues. So when you hear it, don't wait 10 minutes to tell me. Don't, well, I, I'm, that's not good enough. As soon as it starts coming out of their mouth, let me know. And I'll tell the congregation, people just received the Holy Ghost. God is about to pour out his spirit in this altar right now. What you saw in those videos of Haiti, about to happen in this place right now. God's going to pour out His Spirit in the aisle. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Up here in the front, God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you're chilling in the back and you don't want it, fine. But God's still trying to reach you. You need the Holy Ghost. God is here for every person that wants it. Would you get your faith out right now? Your mind's on God. Desiring Him. You've repented. Now it's time to worship God. Would you raise your hands? Get ready to pray with someone. By the authority of the word of God. By the power of the name of Jesus. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Shout hallelujah. Now lay your hands on them. Lay your hands on them and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One's receiving the Holy Ghost. That's it. Lay your hands on them. Two, just receive the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost now. That's it. It's all over you. Let it flow. Right now. That's it. 
There you go. Speak it out. There you go. Number three. That's it. Receive the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name. That's it. Let that tongue go. Let that tongue go. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. One speaking. Go speak it out. There you go. That's it. Speak it out. That's it. Number three right here. Another one speaking in tongues in Jesus' name. Now. There you go. She already had the Holy Ghost. Number four. She does. Three. Have received the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Fill right now with the Spirit. Let's, with your own mouth. I love you, Jesus. Receive the Holy Ghost right now. In Jesus' name, right now. Receive the Holy There you go. There you go. Let that tongue go. Let that tongue go. When they get it, let me know. Three, I know, have already received the Holy Ghost. Number four, let's receive the Holy Ghost. Number four, number five. Hallelujah. Anybody else need the Holy Ghost? right now now receive the holy ghost right now that's it in the name of jesus of nazareth there you go there you go in jesus name in jesus name holy ghost right now that's it yes there you go another one another one in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name lord right now fill it with the holy ghost Right now, right, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. In Receive the Holy Ghost right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. It's all over you, sir. Let it out of your mouth. Let it go. Let it flow. Let it flow. Anybody else receive it? I know six have received the Holy Ghost so far. Anybody else receive the Holy Ghost? Let me know when they get it. There you go. Hallelujah. 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 Who's next? In the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's it. That's it, ma'am. That's it. That's it. You can do it. I'm right here with you. In the name of Jesus, every stronghold, let go now. In Jesus' name, every stronghold, let go. There it is. Here it comes. Here it comes. Right now. There. Number seven, right here. She's speaking in tongues. That's it. That was so easy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'll let you know in a minute. In Jesus, number eight, just receive number nine, just receive the Holy Ghost. Who's next? Who's next? God is pouring out His Spirit. Anybody in the aisle want the Holy Ghost? If you're in the aisle want the Holy Ghost, would you raise your hand? Anybody in the aisle need the Holy Ghost? Because no one's praying with you. So, does anyone need the Holy Ghost? Keep praying up here. You're good. Don't be afraid. I'll come pray with you. Anybody in the aisle? I'm coming down there. Hallelujah. Keep praying with your neighbor. Nine have already received the Holy Ghost. You got it? You, got it. you have the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's, it's all over you, Tony. It's all over you, buddy. It's all over you, dude. Right now. That's it. That's it. It's coming. That's it. Come on. That's it, dude. Come on, bro. You're there. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. Every stronghold. Let go now. In Jesus' name. Receive the Holy Ghost. Come on, dude. You're there. You're there. We're praying with you. You're there. Come on. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Keep going. 
I love you so much. Hallelujah. Every stronghold down. Now, in Jesus' name, every wall down. Is there anything in your head yet, bro? Okay. Yeah. Let's kind of work those words out, bro. Work those words out, okay? It's coming. In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord. You hear those words. You said it. Now speak it out, Bubba. Speak it out. You're doing good. Come on, Delan, let's worship the Lord. Come on, Delan, let's go after it. In Jesus' name. Come on, there you go, dude. There you go. Now, receive the Holy Ghost. Now. There you go. Come on, come on, dude. buddy. You're on the edge, buddy. Come on, dude. You're doing really good. You're doing really good. You're doing, you're doing good. You feel it? Okay, you feel it? Bless. It's In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Another one just received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Tony, it's all over you. It's time to let it out for you too now. It's time to let it out right now. In Jesus' name. 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 Come on, dude. Come on. You're there, bro. You're taking it so closely, dude. I'm with you. Can I get some guys to come help me pray with them? Can I get some fellas to come help me pray with them? That's it in Jesus' name. Come on, Tony. You're right there. You're on the edge, buddy. Come on, Tony. Come on, Tony. Come on, Tony. Come on, loose. There you go. There you go. Yes! That's it, Tony. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost right there, Bubba. Another one right here. Just receive the Holy Ghost. Anybody else want it? Anybody else want it? Anybody else? I believe that's 10 or 11 that have received the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody? This one over here got it too. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 One earlier before song service too. That would be 12. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else need the Holy Ghost? Every stronghold let go. Every stronghold let go of him right now in Jesus' name. Every stronghold. Holy Ghost, come upon him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, right now, every stronghold, every addiction, broke, now. Holy Ghost, 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 now. In Jesus' name, sir, that's it, let it flow again, let it flow again. That's it, let it flow again. Holy Ghost, take over his body, take over his mind, take over the battle. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ of Nazareth. Henry, Holy Ghost is all over you right now. You're going to loose that tongue. 
and let it go now in Jesus name right now loose that tongue that's it that's it loose that tongue hallelujah loose that tongue receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus name right now there you go Henry there you go Henry there you go Henry come on Henry you're there go through the door Bubba. there you go now yes yes there you go Henry that's the Holy Ghost come on Bubba it just came out it just came out let it come again let it come again Henry Henry's got it. More's coming. It's Henry. It's Holy Ghost, Henry. Let it go again, man. That's it, Henry. Let it go. Yes. 